Hey, hello again. Hey, we're now on the fourth uh, video in this series on entrepreneurship in action. We're now at a point in the maturity of your business is that we've done the ideation phase. We figure out that we've got an idea worth chasing and we've done some market research in order to flesh out the what this market looks like and who the competition is and all that sort of stuff. So here we are. <laughs> Why the heck am I talking about advisors at this stage? We'll get into that in a little bit of detail. There's a reason for it. But look, uh, before I go any further, please take a look at the Entredot YouTube channel. I just took some time to kind of reorganize the playlists as they appear on the homepage of our uh, YouTube channel. It's much easier to follow. There's an introductory video as well I put in there. So I've kind of spiffied this thing up. It's a whole lot easier to follow. Uh, and there is about nine playlists right in a row with all of the videos within it. You can look at them at random, whatever you choose to do. But please go there, take a look, uh, give me your comments. I'll respond to them. I can use suggestions as well. I'm not an expert yet <laughs> on most of this, but uh, I keep working on it every day. So please subscribe. So back to advisors a minute. So why the heck am I talking about advisors? Well, look, you're early. There are going to be times where you can use some advice. You're not sure about things, about your market, about your competition. How am I going to approach sales? How am I going to approach marketing? Uh, what legal obligations do I have? How the heck am I going to raise the money? And on and on and on. There's lots of reason to have advisors. So I'm suggesting to you that you form what I'll call a loose coalition of really strong people. I call it an advisory or an advisory service or a group of advisors, whatever you want to call it. We're not forming formal boards, not forming contractual arrangements with any, any of these people I'm going to take you through. But early on here, you want to make sure you're on the right track on a lot of different subjects. The first one is the business itself. It would be very advisable for you to have a business coach or a group of business coaches, very informal. I'm not talking about putting consulting contracts in place. These are people that you know or you could be introduced to by other business coaches for various aspects of how to put a plan together. That's what you're about to do. You're halfway th into it already with market research and competitive analysis and things like that. You're going to get on to marketing and sales and all that sort of thing. Having business coaches give you some advice on how to do these things correctly. So I, I always talk about having a business coach. Even if you're a mature entrepreneur, you're up and running, you still have problems. But at this stage, you need basic advice on how, how to do things right and not make terrible mistakes. I also suggest to you that you can use a business mentor, someone much less formal than a business coach. A mentor is someone you can confide in. You can do it on a personal basis. You, you want to bounce some ideas off this person and get some feedback. And uh, it's a much more loose relationship. It may actually be contractual. You may have a mentor for many years. I'm a mentor. I've had some people for two or three years uh, in an ongoing relationship as, as a mentor to them. Uh, I don't profess to be a business coach, although I used to be. I don't, I don't practice that any further. But I think a mentor is kind of special, a trusted mentor, someone who is impartial. Business coach is thinking they're going to get a contract with you, so they're a little bit tainted in terms of their impartiality. A mentor, particularly those that are unpaid, don't have a horse in your race. So they can tell you what they think and really be honest about it. That's what you want. Good, impartial, honest, no obligations advice. That's a mentor. I urge you to get one of them. Then I'm not suggesting, even though I say advisory board, I think you ought to be thinking about who you're going to have on your advisory board. You're meeting lots of people in your market research and you're going to meet many, many more. Be on the lookout for a good set of advisors that will form 
an advisory board. And you might even give them a little sliver of stock for being on your board. And you're going to ask them later to perform certain tasks uh, and trade for this stock you're going to provide for them. At this point in your business, be on the lookout for them. You want people that know your market, know your product line, know like the industry you're in, perhaps have, have connections to all sorts of companies that you may want to partner with for marketing, for sales, manufacturing, distribution, but, and the list goes on. Whatever you need at the very early stage here, when you find a get at the point where you're going to launch your company, to have a group of people, some of whom will be on your advisory board and be compensated for it, to help guide you in a very serious and obligated way, because you're going to pay them a little stock to help you do this. So be thinking about your advisory board at this point, identifying people. That's my point here. Later on, when you're up and running, I, in fact, some of the videos I've done for other playlists talk about having an advisory board. I talk about this very same thing, but I'm pointing out to them, they need one now. You don't need a board right now, but you want to be prepared to put one together by identifying the best people that you would have on it. Same goes for a board of directors. Now, if you're raising money, the board of director scheme is usually <laughs> two people representing the investors, two insiders, like the CEO and the CFO or the or CEO or head of development and one independent. Again, be on the lookout for that independent. <laughs> the other four board members are pretty well spoken for already. You know kind of who they're going to be, especially for raising money. And now look, if you're not raising money, hey, you get to pick them all. But you, like with the advisory board, you want people that now you're going to ask to take a fiduciary responsibility representing the shareholders of this company. That's a big deal. They're taking risk in carrying out this fiduciary responsibility and guiding the company and, and doing the governance things that are necessary to run a company. They're not operating officers of your company or anything like that. But again, be on the lookout for these people. But if you don't have investors, uh, you're going to have a couple of insiders. I'd suggest you have five on the board still, but th pick three people that are really quite independent, but represent really important parts of the market. Quite frankly, at least one of them is, is a very experienced board director. Someone who's been schooled on this, that's done it a few times, can make sure you're doing all the right governance things. That coupled with an attorney that you should be identifying early on here that uh, would also be you know, a, an advisor to, to the board of directors, as well as you, of course. So again, you're going to have legal matters this early on. You, you got confidentiality agreements to worry about. You may have intellectual property work going on, you know, filing for patents and things like that. So you may have need for attorneys that you're going to pay for their services for those kinds of things. Pick one that really has been through the ropes of getting a company up and running in the first place. Not attorneys that are working with companies way down the road in terms of business maturity. You want the, those attorneys that say, hey, we work, we work with early stage companies. Look for that in their description of their practices and look for an attorney that has experience in doing these kinds of things. You may have to add two, one for intellectual property or one for the business formation. There's a lot of legal work to form a company. They're the ones that are going to help you file all those documents that you probably heard, heard about to make sure you've got a real company and have all of the board resolution that actually start your company. That sounds funny. That's the way it really works. Then the final one is start also identifying financial services that you're going to need. An accountant, preferably one that has a CPA. They're the best. They're trained in all sorts of aspects of financing. When you are doing your uh, financial forecast for your business, when you're trying to figure out, can I really make money at this? And you get your Excel spreadsheets out and you're, you're calculating revenue and cost of goods sold and, and then uh, get your gross profit figured out and then add up your all your budget items and subtract the operating expense from all that gross profit and you find out you got a net profit, hopefully. But 
an accountant can do this rather readily. They have templates that they just fill out that uh, can help you with this. You really do want to have a start on a good financial basis and financial management processes and procedures performed by a CPA. So consider that as well. So that's it. Get early advisors and get early advice from them. That's what I'm talking about. The more advice you ask for, the more you'll get and you'll keep yourself on the right road to starting your company. And while you walk down that right road, have a great day doing it.